everybody welcome back to my stitch with me video um today i really have no plan in terms of what i'm going to be talking about so it's going to be a lot of rambling but i hope you will enjoy it um we'll start something together this is a new piece that i am starting and if you have watched my previous floss tube video you will have known at this point that i'll be starting four pieces in may for stitch mania or stitch sania some people have started to say and this is the pattern that i'm stitching i really want to stitch this for my new home that i'm moving into in june now i've i know in that video i've said how much um i would want to finish it by then but i don't think that will ever happen because I didn't realize how huge this um, pattern is. It's massive. Honestly, guys, it's ridiculously huge. Um, I'm using 50 by 70 centimeter fabric, um, which in inches, I don't really know. Let's have a look if I can give you inches. Just sort of for your own sake. So the size is... 27 inches by 19 and it's the fabric is by Barbara Al Creations. Here we go. I can't remember if it was one of the sort of monthly fabric of the months or was it just a generic purchased one? I think it was a generic one. Um, it's called Lightstone, I believe. Um, so I will be starting this. I'll be stitching um, with B5200 first. And then we'll see where we go from there. I'm not going to mark the this chart. I hope you can't really see it too much. I uh, don't want to get into any trouble with anybody. Maybe that's a bit better. Now, in terms of the angle, um, I still haven't figured it out sort of the best angle for Stitch With Me's. I think this is the best one so far um, in terms of it being comfortable for me and you being able to see enough. Um... I really need to figure out how to do these. Uh, I suppose if I was sat at the table, it would be different, but I don't do that. So I tend to sit on my on my sofa, just enjoy life, you know, do my own thing. Now it is quite bright outside. I filmed my latest floss tube wrapping up February, March and April and when I started it it was so lovely outside and sunny and by the time I got to the end of that video which is just over an hour it got so dark so dark um but hopefully that won't be too visible in the video now what count is this fabric I think it's 32 count so do 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 I'll probably be using two strands. I usually use two strands on 32 count. Oh, I'm sorry guys. Wow, you wobbly. So I'm gonna do that. Um I'll just talk to you about a couple of things and then we will see where we go from there. I'm not sure how long this video is gonna be. It might be just 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour. We will see. Um so somebody has asked me in private messages on Instagram um what were sort of the strangest and weirdest things for me when i moved to the uk um because if you don't know i'm uh i have moved to the uk in 2012 when i was 18 19 um and i talk about my country a little bit more in my previous stitch with me and i will link it up here for you so you could go and have a look if you are interested um, I think it's quite interesting to to see a little bit about Lithuania and I added quite a few pieces of knowledge in there. So if you're interested, go and have a look. Um, but yes, there were a few things that I did find, you know, not weird, but maybe a little strange. Um, so when I moved in here, I lived with uh, four other people in a house. Now, those four other people, one of them was a student, the others were working professionals, but they were all guys. And as we know, men can be sometimes quite honest and quite blunt, which is just like me. <laughs> if you know me in real life, I am super blunt, very, very honest. And 
it can be an issue for certain women, for example. <laughs> anyway, so um, I, uh, ooh, sorry, let me just count a little bit. So I, when I moved in, there were a few things that I found a little bit strange for me, at least. Number one being um, when my housemates would ask me what what tea would I like, I would say black tea. Now, in Lithuania, when we want just, you know, dark tea, we don't, we just say black tea. Now, my housemate turned around and he said to me, what, are you a racist? Like, jokingly. And uh, I didn't understand what he meant. And he basically said that in the UK, you guys say um, not black tea, but you say normal tea. So... That was just one of those little things that uh that was different. So I'm just trying to figure out where's the middle in here. So it's somewhere down here, I think. One, two, three. I think this is pretty much pretty much right. So one, two, three, four, five. Mm. One, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half. I'm just trying to figure out where to start because I marked the middle here. Um, so you're going to have to bear with me and count a little. Um, so one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, this is how I normally count, so I mark the middle and then just go up. Um, so thank you for bearing with me. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty, one, two, three. I might actually have to start from here just to make sure that I don't uh, miscount anything. I think I'm going to start from here. Anyway, so the tea was one of those things that I did find, you know, just a little bit strange. I'm not going to say it was the strangest thing, but it's one of those things. And then what else? When I worked, so when I came over, I worked in a hotel, um, just as a, you know, a cleaning person. Um, and then I moved on to the reception because the owners realised that I speak many languages. Um, but I did do the cleaning first and um, I didn't know what a hoover was. And I don't know if any of you who are not from the UK would know what a hoover is. I only found out because of the job that I was doing. So a hoover is a vacuum cleaner. However, it's called a hoover because um, it's a brand. So in the UK, that's a brand for a vacuum cleaner. And it just became a household name all of a sudden. So instead of, you know calling it a vacuum cleaner they call it a hoover so again this is just one of those strange little things let me just change my needle now has there been anything else i'm trying to think um certain things but that's more of a language thing rather than the culture thing i end up saying a lot um uh i don't know you would say what is it called and i would say something else for example how do you call it and sometimes here in the k you would say what do you call it rather than how do you call it um so there were little things like that um let's see cultural things um has there been anything food wise i think it's been more of a shock to everybody else who i lived with in terms of culture <laughs> culture and 
food and everything else. Um, so back at home in Lithuania, we have a pasta soup. So we just, we eat pasta with milk, basically a little bit of um, butter and we're good to go, you know, because obviously Lithuania has been a very poor country for a very long time. We belong to USSR for ages and had to find other ways to feed our children. Well, my mum had to find ways to feed her child and her family. But it's a very common thing to have a milk soup with pasta in it. And it's not really just Lithuanian thing. My friend from Latvia, she said it's a thing in Latvia as well. So it's, you know, but to English people, uh, to my old housemates, that was something so bizarre and so incredibly strange and unreal. And they just could not understand how could somebody eat a milk soup. Um, it was just, they couldn't, they couldn't come to terms with it. Um, so suppose that's just one of those things. Has there been anything else food wise? I don't really make a lot of Lithuanian meals here just because it's easier and I suppose more convenient to make English English food uh, when all of the supermarkets are, you know, targeted towards English meals. Um, so I don't think there's been much, much else. Um... What else? Um, a lot of, again, because of my job, I meet a lot of people. I'm in front of a lot of people. So I do get told that my accent sounds a little bit either South African or Norwegian or some sort of Scandinavian. But I get a lot that I sound a bit South African. I suppose maybe... Maybe people use the brains rather than just listening to what I sound like. They hear that my, obviously my English is quite good. I don't make many mistakes. Um, I haven't, you know, I haven't got, I don't need to stop to think about it. I don't need to come up with a sentence. I know straight away, I sort of think in English at this point now. And people just assume that, okay, well, she doesn't sound Australian um an Eng another english speaking country so she must be south african um i don't know it could be just me but i think that's what normally happens so i do get a lot of that um oh also if you're interested this um grime guard i bought from an etsy shop just in case you wanted to know where it's from i buy if i don't make them i usually just buy them on etsy shop any of Etsy shops that mainly that are UK based just well number one I want to support local businesses and number two I don't want to pay ridiculous amounts of money for shipping <laughs> um, but that's the main reasons really so that's in terms of me living here and do I find anything strange um, I don't want to offend anybody but English culture is quite simple um, there aren't many traditions or many kind of very unique things um do i eat marmite no i don't i don't like marmite um i think it's i i do apologize but i think it's disgusting um but it's one of those things you either love it or hate it and a lot of people love it so you know whatever floats everybody else's boat but it is not for me it is not for me unfortunately you know what guys i might have to actually mark the pattern oh well my printer doesn't work so i have to do it on the actual pattern um oh well oh well oh well needs must um i'm just uploading a video for you all um oh that doesn't work floss to video uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it it's quite long not gonna lie it's over an hour but i had a lot to catch up um, I had to wrap up February, March, April, go over mania, starts, birthday, start, purchases, all sorts. So you're just going to have to grab yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee and watch it when you do have a moment. I highly recommend watching the whole, 
the whole episode if you like what else um somebody has asked me before about my tattoos and how did it all start and the history and my thoughts so maybe it's a good time to elaborate on that um seeing that uh i don't really have much else to uh develop on at this point so i got my first tattoo when i was I think I was 19. Um, I got my first tattoo here in the UK. Um, so yeah, I, I must have been I must have been 19. I would have gotten it when I was 18, but I didn't really want to upset my mum. So um little prehistory of where I got it, how I got it. Um unfortunately, as much as I would like to say that, you know, I spend time. Oh, did I make it? As much as I want to say that I've spent time going over of what I wanted, of where I wanted, of who I wanted to do it for me. Nope, that was not the case. I was on a bus going to a, a pre-party with my university friends. And it was quite late. It must have been somewhere around nine o'clock at night. And I the bus went past um went past a tattoo shop which was still open to my surprise and when I realized that they were open I thought hmm, you know what maybe that's a sign I'm just going to hop off the bus go down there have a think what I want and get my first ever tattoos so my first ever tattoos were on my wrists so it's this one here and I have another one here which has been covered up now by another tattoo. Um, but that was my first ones. Um, though, as I say, there wasn't a plan of what, why. well, I kind of knew what I wanted. So these are musical terms on my wrists, they um Italian words. Um, and because I did play piano and you play with both hands and it just, for some reason, it that's what i wanted and i don't really re regret it really um one two, three. i don't really regret it and i know one of them is covered up but it's just because there was an opportunity to cover it with another piece that was going next to it um if there wasn't i wouldn't have covered it up really um now it was done by the tattoo shop's owner's daughter and i think it was one of her first tattoos i don't think it was her first tattoo but it was one of her first tattoos she was fairly nervous and i suppose that should have been a bad sign really um but you can even tell in those tattoos that one of them has a a better writing straight lines um they didn't really bleed out um they don't they're not shaky or anything along those lines whereas on the left the one that i got covered up it's a little bit shaky so she wasn't very consistent oh you can see the sun shining through um so you know i mean it could have gone better but i don't regret it um i didn't tell my mum because no, I didn't feel like it really. I didn't think she will get what's happened. Anyway, and then I got them done and I went to the pre-party. And after that pre-party, we went out clubbing. So I was in a club with um my wrist being wrapped up um in, you know, some tissue and cling film. So it probably did look a little bit like I have done something um just a little a little bit before we went there but it is what it is obviously not the greatest idea because it wasn't very sterile there and I should have just stayed home but that was the 18 19 year old me and then the second tattoo that I got I think was on my collarbone and if I have any photos I'll insert them for you to to have a look somewhere down here maybe if i can find any and if they're decent um i have a tattoo on my collarbone and it's one of my favorites 
it's been done very nicely um there's no issues with it at all to this day it looks perfect i got it done maybe in the same year maybe i was still 19 i want to say i was still 19 um so i was still pretty young let's put it that way and it's a phrase it says uh it's in latin uh and if i translate it it means i will find a way or make one so just in case any of you are wondering what it means if you ever see it in my floss two videos now you will know um so that was i think that was my second one i'm not 100 percent sure but i think it was my second one um i also have a, a phrase going down my spine not the whole spine just sort of halfway through and that's li the lyrics from the who song born get fooled again um, that was done by the same tattoo artist that did my collarbone, the great one. Um, he was literally down the road, but he was very good. He owned the shop, um, and I think he still does. Um, and he's really good, especially with, you know, scripts and writing and those kind of things. After that one, I got... Let's think about it. After that one, I think I got the one with the elephants on my arm here. And I'll try to put a photo in. I think that was my next one. Um, I love it to this day. And now I found out that um, the tattoo artist that did it for me, she was pretty, pretty new when she did it for me. Now she's very well established, very popular tattoo artist. And also, she is my housemate's friend. So, <laughs> which I only figured it out when she showed me the photo of her um, at a festival or something along those lines. And I realised it was the same, you know, her friend is was my artist. Um, so that's that. Um, I do need to get it touched up. It doesn't look... It, you know the greatest at the moment it does need to be touched up I because I had it done so many years ago and it's so detailed um you'll see that in the photo it's so 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 detailed um and so tiny that you know after it must be now maybe five or seven years that I more than five maybe seven years that I had it done so it has sort of bled a little bit bled out a little bit so I'll, I can always go and see if she would touch it up for me especially knowing that she's still here she lives nearby she works in a tattoo studio she's my housemate's friend so you know that shouldn't be a problem at all uh what else did I get then I got my um my first color piece and like the big piece um it took six hours which looking at it it looks like it took way longer than that it looks like it should have taken eight hours but it took only six hours um i it was done by somebody who's actually uh he was hungarian but he does come to london to visit his friends who own a tattoo shop as well so they are uh, i think those guys are from czech republic his friends so he comes, visits them and tattoos in the studio for two days in London. And he does this twice a year, I believe. Um, so I sort of saw his work on Instagram and it's beautiful. It's new school style. And if you don't know what new school is, it's quite cartoony. It's similar to graffiti. And he was actually a graffiti artist before he was doing tattoos. Um so just to give you an idea but it's beautiful and I, I would love to see him again for him to finish my entire entire arm and then I had let's think what was next let's think let's think I think the next tattoo I had was um on my shoulder sort of way it's still on my arm but going from the shoulder down um 
that was done in a tattoo convention he here where i live um and it's i like it it's custom but it has faded quite a lot and it's one of the well not recent recent tattoos that i have but you know i have older tattoos that have done better it's also in color um again i'll insert a photo to show you but um it could have done better in my opinion i do like it but it's i love it let's put it that way but it's not one of my favorites some of the others are my favorites and then I got two pieces on my back, which are my all-time favourites. Like, they are the best ever. Um, and I will try and insert a photo for the first one. Now, again, that got done in a tattoo convention in Brighton. Um, but I stalked the artist for a very long time. And it wasn't that I just came up to her in a convention. No, I pre-booked her in advance. And also, I don't know if... <laughs> if it's of any of your interest but if you get a tattoo done at a convention it's usually a little bit more expensive that you would normally pay because the artist has to pay for the booth um so got that one done now the actual artwork for that one is a stone woman now crying uh crying and sort of splitting in half stone woman now the actual artwork isn't done by her this is a uh, a photograph of uh, a model that's been taken by a very famous photographer and if I can remember his name I will put it in here but from the top of my head I can't I want to say he's from Argentina maybe and he's very famous for very intricate photo shoots and I just loved 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 the idea of it um, and what it stands for so for me it's a a crying woman that's splitting in half but she's still strong she's a stone woman so she's still um managing to get through everything by herself um she's still managing to survive and function and i just thought it it was so me and especially at, at that time in my life it i really resonated with that and then on the other side of my back I have also a tattoo of a woman uh, with horns. Again, it's artwork is done. It's uh, the same photograph of a model done by the same photographer. Um, again, I'll try to maybe insert original photos as well. So you could see what was the original photo and how it turned out on me. Um, it, they are uh, stunning photos. So the second tattoo I have of that artist, it's a woman in her horns. So she's sort of stronger than the stone woman. She's more powerful. She's gone through what she has experienced. And now she's, you know, stubborn with all of her powers, with ability to resist everything, with ability to survive, with ability to... um. I don't know, to, with the ability to um, suffer through whatever is thrown at her. Um, I really like that one. Now, she's not finished yet. So when I show you a photo, um, there's still to be done. Um, so at the bottom of her, uh, her hand isn't finished. A finger isn't finished. And at the top of her, one of the horns isn't completely finished. Um, but I think if you look at her sort of, once without me telling you that they're not finished you probably wouldn't know um but there is a plan so they're not just the two of them in the middle of nowhere on my back um there is a plan of having um a few other ladies down going further down below um and having sort of like a dagger in the middle of my back covering that writing that I already have this says won't get fooled again it's going to be a dagger with a fire blasting out of it and splitting my back in half that's why both ladies are on separate sides one is very strong side and the other one is sort of broken side at least that's the idea now the issue is that my artist has actually moved so I got both tattoos done at Brighton Tattoo Convention in the consecutive years um, and my artist lived 
I call her my artist because she really is. Um, my tattoo artist lived in Birmingham, but she has moved up to, I want to say Leeds maybe at this point or somewhere up north. So she's so far away from me. It would take me a day to drive up to her just to drive. Um, I suppose it will be fast if I take the train, but obviously that's more expensive and just a different well it's got just a different you know remit and so i might have to wait for her to come to a convention that's closer oh by the way i don't live in brighton it's just it's um you know a couple of hours for me to get to brighton so um but that's in terms of tattoos i've not had a tattoo recently even though i tend to get two a year i didn't get any last year for obvious reasons covid um, and then the year before, I don't think I got any either. I was just in sort of, you know, save up money for my own house mode that I didn't get any tattoos done. And I don't really know when will be my next one. I do have a craving for another one. And I know not everybody's happy with tattoos. I totally understand. And I'm, I'm really sorry, please, if, if, tattoos really trigger you um I, I don't expect you to watch this video um but I know that there's quite a big community of stitches who do have tattoos and even have cross stitching tattoos um which are also so cool then you know I'm very happy that you're pleased to see this stitch with me but if not I won't be offended if you don't want to watch it um but yeah that's it and then Another sort of tattoo related note, when I did my bachelor's degree, my first degree, I, um, the degree, my degree was in events management, um, and I had consumer behavior, um, as one of the modules, which I've just also finished in my marketing degree. I had the same module, consumer behavior, just way more expanded. It's my favorite subject ever. Um, it's so good. There's a lot of psychology in it. That's why I love it. Anyway, um, when I did my dissertation for my bachelor's degree, um, my dissertation was about tattoo conventions and how conventions impact, um, self-authenticity, um, and conformity and those kind of things. So I went to Sheffield Tattoo Convention and interviewed some tattoo artists and some people who were getting tattooed for my dissertation. And the theme, you will never guess, the theme for that tattoo convention, and again, if I can find a photo, I'll insert it, was Star Wars. So there were so many storm stormtroopers just walking around, you know, chilling in there in their outfits <laughs> um so that was so cool it took me from where i live it took me i think six hours to drive six yeah i think it was six hours to drive to sheffield and i drove with uh my housemate just because he wanted to go as well and it was cheaper and he just said he'll join me and that was so fun we had such a great weekend but even my dissertation was on kind of tattoos. Uh, I don't know if anybody's interested. I can see if I can find my dissertation. <laughs> um, I'm quite interested to read it to see what my findings were. I found a lot about the first tattoos that were discovered by humanity. Um, and just like the prehistory and how it ended up where it is right now. It was so interesting, so interesting. Um, and I think if any of you are writing any dissertations, you will know that, you know, all cause lecturers tell us to pick the subject that interests you. Otherwise, you're not going to write 10,000 words about something that you have no interest in. Find something that really resonates with you. And also, I don't know if any of you know, but when dissertations are marked, they are marked for the originality, for the sub how original the subject matter is. And I got 100% in the uh, originality subject. So it's worth a think about 
your um your hobbies maybe even stitching i think if i'd been so into stitching then maybe that would have been a subject maybe i would have related it to retreats stitching retreats um because it has to be an event related obviously it was events degree but see just a tip if any of you are you know having to write dissertations for your degrees um just relate it to something that it's very interesting to you. I found it so entertaining just reading up on the history and going to libraries and on the internet and trying to find like old articles and it was just fantastic. Um, it was amazing. So that's in terms of tattoos. We of course have a few other stitches that have tattoos. I think the 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 one stitcher that comes in mind to me at least is Lolly. Uh, she's here in the UK as well. Uh, I think her channel is called Lollipop Stitches uh, or something along those lines. Um, so I relate to her on that front. But as I say, I, I also understand um, the perspective of people not liking tattoos on anybody else and not liking tattoos on themselves. Um, I, you know, I get that people, some people are thinking, what are you going to look like when you're old? Um, to me, it doesn't matter. I think I'm going to look super cool and very unique. No, you know, I won't know many grandpas and, and grandmas that are of my age with tattoos. I'm going to be a cool grandma one day. So that's how I look at it. There's also been an exhibition um, of... Uh, again, it, it was photographs of old, older generations um, with tattoos on and the way the tattoos look now that they are older. That exhibition is amazing. I will see if I can find some photos um, that have been taken for that exhibition. It's just amazing. I think that it's it makes you so unique and so interesting. But again, I also understand that it's not everybody's cup of tea and I've just made a mistake. Uh, I can see that I am by one too low. Which also means... Oh, wait, guys, I think I found a mistake. Okay, no drama. I found the mistake. I'm gonna have to frog a little bit, but it's only three stitches. Um, it's difficult talking and doing this. I don't know how other stitchers do stitch with me and uh, stitch on like heads and things. I, I don't, honestly, I, I don't think I could concentrate and count and make sure that I don't make any mistakes if it being a head. Um, so people like uh, Dizzy Stitcher, I know I mentioned him in my uh, latest floss tube as well. I don't know how he, he stitches on full coverage pieces, does stitches with me, no problems at all, just goes ahead as if, you know, he's just chatting to somebody that's sat next to him, and, uh, well, I suppose it is kind of that, but, um, the fact that I'm trying to tell you a little story or something else, and count and do that with the little gaps, but you all understand, that's... That's life. That's what it's like in real life when you stitch in front of maybe your boyfriend or husband or your family. Um, what else? Do I have anything to talk about? Um, <laughs> I'm very excited about my move to a new flat. Again, go watch my latest floss tube to know a little bit more about my new flat. Um, but I am moving in June and I'm so excited. I think... Furniture-wise, there's a few things that will be difficult. Um, I have a, a chest of drawers from Ikea, like the double long ones, and I, I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. And I think it's going to be too long for the new flat. I don't think I'll be able to put it in the living room. I don't think I'll be able to put it in the bedroom. And I can't really split it in half because it's connected there's only one panel in the middle from the memory when I was putting it together last year because I only bought it last year um and I do vaguely remember that it's there's only one wall in in the middle so I might have to sell it 
or just get rid of it. In all fairness, it is a little bit scratched up and things, and it's not ideal at this point. Um, so I, I might just have to pull it apart, still take it to the new flat, figure it out if it's going to work, and then get rid, or just keep it in my car, then measure. I don't have access to my new place till June, so when I do have access, go and measure um, and figure things out. Um, I'm taking the sofa here that I've got here with me. Um, I've got a double bed, bedside tables, I have a little dressing table, which also I don't know if it's going to have a space, it might have to go. Um, ideally, I would like a proper desk, but at the moment I'm using that IKEA dressing table as a desk. So it's there for my laptop and for my um, sewing machine. I might just have to keep it or might have to buy something new and replace it with something. So I'll just have to figure it out. But I'm so excited. I do want to buy a storage unit for all my cross stitch stash. So if you have any ideas, any links to anything from the UK <laughs> um, or even IKEA, it could be IKEA from abroad and I'll find it here in the UK. Something that... I could put my cross stitch things in and something that wouldn't maybe need to be nailed into the floor or into the wall because I, a lot of Ikea furniture needs to be stabilized uh, by sort of um, nailing things into the wall and hooking it up. So if there's anything that I could use without doing that, maybe that you know those cubes um from ikea and then i could put everything in those big baskets that i do have gray baskets and just put them in ikea cube cube holes if they're big enough um yeah i don't really know tell me what what would you advise what would you do um right let's count so i need to count up to seven now sorry guys there'll be a bit a bit of a pause um so that's one Two, three, four, <laughs> four, five. Six and seven. I'm also trying to figure out if there's anything else that I would need for YouTube making videos for you guys. So I did buy this ring light that I have here so that if I'm back from work and I feel like doing a video um, after work in the evening I could still film it um, you know in the dark just with the ring light on um, I did my last stitch with me the one with the dancing cat late at night um, it was pitch black but the ring light made it all worth it, it you couldn't tell it was dark outside so is the I'm trying to think if, if there's anything I don't want to buy anything new but I do think that the quality could be better but I don't know how to make the quality better what do you guys think what do you think about the quality um yeah I don't know maybe maybe I should add a few other things to make improve it a little bit um but again YouTube is one of those things that um you know it, it gets better as the years go by and I'll be a bit more efficient at it and more regular uh what else oh um i'm getting so close to a thousand subscribers here on youtube um now somebody had asked me yes i will be doing a giveaway um as soon as i reach 1000 subscribers maybe a little bit later um just because i will probably have either and i know i've talked about this in my latest floss too but in case you didn't see there will be either three or five winners i haven't decided yet and i'm making one of the prizes so it depends on how quickly i can make that prize um you know it will 
basically decide on when the giveaway starts but I'll definitely do something um, I will say this that there will be a requirement to follow me on Instagram I'm not sure whether that will be a requirement or that will be an additional entry um, I'll think about it I'll figure it out I'll figure it out <laughs> um oh i think i may have a done a boo-boo it's so nice guys outside the sun is out it's such a lovely evening but i have to study tonight i am a week behind my studies um the way they're doing it is that um i have assignments weekly assignments that i do and they normally have some weighing into like the overall module grade so the new module that I am working on at the moment is marketing and communications and for 10 weeks um, I will have 10 assignments and all 10 assignments um, have 50% weighing on the overall marketing communications grade um, and then the other 50% will be um, a report of 3000 words um, and there's already a subject out released on what the report has to be on. So that's the way it works. But what they do is you can submit that week's assignment that week or the following week. And why they give you that extra follow following week is due to COVID. Um, all assignments have a two week period. So I'm submitting last week's assignments this week. That's why I'm behind in my mind. So I would like to catch up. Um, maybe I might be able to do that, but we will have to see. In between everything else, it's there's quite you know, it's quite intense. There's quite a lot to do, quite a lot to read. Um, so the way I'm doing it, um, I'm doing uh, my course for now at least is online because of covid and when i started i think they've said that it will be online because they don't think they're going to swap it around halfway through the year um so that means that i don't actually have to be at the university um lectures are recorded online um there's slides online um there's uh assignments online obviously and then uh textbook is online and they tell you which chapters to read each week and then which additional papers i need to read each week but there's a lot of reading you guys there's a lot um it's not just a a brief you know an hour's worth of studying there's more like a couple of hours each day kind of thing uh one two three four five Yes, yeah, so we will see if I'll be able to catch up, I'm hoping. Um, what else? Unfortunately, this year I'm probably not going to any retreats. Um, again, COVID kind of put a stop on a lot of things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one more. Um, I was meant to go to a retreat in April, and now that didn't happen. They're organising another one in October, but because of my work... All events have been postponed at work to kind of those months, so September, October time, and I'm just, I can't get out. Um, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I just cannot uh, escape, really. Um, so unfortunately, no retreats for me this year. Ideally, I would love to go to StitchCon. Now, I did get invitation for this year's StitchCon. I got in which was a miracle, but it's probably because nobody else took it. Um, but I just can't, again, it would have been June and I just can't, not this year. I'm so busy with work, even though I would have loved to. I would love to meet a lot of you guys. Um, I love talking to you. Like The biggest advantage of doing YouTube and Flosstube, the reason why I do this is talking to all of you. All of you are so sweet and so kind and so like-minded and we support each other we push each other in it may not be just cross stitch either it could be a few other things you know like mental health and things like me moving out there was been, there's been so many people supporting me and cheering me uh cheering me on and just pushing me to do everything i could uh 
to my best of my abilities and i just think that's that's so 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 sweet and that's the reason why i do this um i hope you enjoy these stitch with me's um i think it's quite fun to do it once a week um just to kind of chat with you what has happened that week or just pick a random topic but i would really appreciate if you could suggest some topics down in the comments for my next stitch with me's because right now i'm just coming up with random topics um but if you could suggest something that would be amazing um one two three four five six seven um that would be absolutely amazing and i could kind of go over those either comments um underneath my videos in my stitch with me or i could just go over the topics that you have suggested i don't know if there's anything else you would like me to talk about and the one thing i will not talk about is politics um two four five um i can tell you what my opinion kind of is or like which party do i stand for or which president did would i have preferred uh, if I lived in the US, for example, that's absolutely fine. But I will not kind of go too deep into it. Three, four, five, six, seven. Um, just because I don't think, number one, that I'm educated enough in that field. Um, I also try not to have any arguments here on Floss Tube. I will express my opinion, maybe, as I mentioned, about which present I would have preferred or... Uh, what do I think about one thing or another but I'm not going to go into discussion or elaborate too much on what's going on in that particular time but if you have any suggestions they are more than welcome I will absolutely love to talk to you about whatever it might be um don't really know I feel like I have spoken a lot about a lot of things um, at this point but I'll see if I can find anything maybe any questions online or something like that and we will go from there now I think I am finished here for today I hope you enjoyed my video please press subscribe if you're new to my channel please press like if you like this video it also helps my videos to be higher up in the search in the algorithm when you do press like um, also press the bell button to be notified about my future videos i try to do them regularly um hopefully fingers crossed at least once a week uh a video of some sort whether it's a stitch with me or just a random talkative video um, but i'll do my best to keep you updated thank you so much for stopping by again i love you all and i will see you next time bye